Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at something which is actually a bit of a blast from the past. So anybody who used the Atari version of Cubase will probably be familiar with this. It was certainly something that I made a fair bit of use of back in the day. But it's something that's actually hidden by default, but it's still present. So I thought it was worth mentioning as occasionally it's a useful thing to know. So I have a fairly simple setup. This is just some samples which I've dug out from various bits of Steinberg content. They kind of fit together. Uh, but what I want to do is to show how you can experiment with different sections of a track without making a lot of edits. So for instance, let's say you wanted to see whether different bars of the bass would fit better in different places in this particular track. Clearly what you could do is you could use your normal editing tool. So here I could just cut this up into four different segments and then Maybe move that out of the way and then repeat this first one and then listen to it with just that first one playing. And then find I don't like that second one, etc. I kind of like some of that uh, and so on. But this is a slightly long winded process if you're going to then do that for the second one and the third one and so on. So what I'm going to do is undo that, put that back how it was. and show you the point of this video, which is the independent track loop. So if you open up your part in an editor, so in this case, we're gonna do it with the editor in the lower zone, just so you can see it. Now, the first issue you have with this is that it's not available by default. And the second issue is, this is absolutely rammed with, with bits that we're not gonna be using. So first thing we're gonna do is set up our toolbar. So I'm gonna turn off some of these, which typically you would actually use. I'm going to turn off view options, which already massively clears that up, and the musical information. So this is just to clear this up. If you're on a bigger screen, you won't need to worry about it. And then I'm going to turn on independent track loop. So if you turn that on, it will appear over here. Now, as is the user sort of interface standard with the three dots, you can expand it or compress it. The button is the most important thing. So you don't necessarily need to see this, but... For any of you who used to use the Atari, this will be looking very familiar. Uh, as you can see on screen, the Atari had very similar controls and this is what reminded me of this. Once you turn this on, you'll notice that the cycle actually disappears. So even though we've got cycle on, so we're gonna loop around this, we've got our independent cycle now here, which you can either draw in in the normal way, and you can see it's a slightly different color, or you can use these controls to enter it, whichever you want. But now what's gonna happen is when I play this track from the beginning, we are going to loop around the other three tracks as normal, but this one is just gonna loop round and round this first bar. So if I press play, this will be the equivalent of the edit that I just did. So that's pretty straightforward. And most importantly, we can just drag this to the next bar. So this will cycle around bar two and the rest of it will just play normally. And you could do the same for bar three or bar four. So you can just pick something really quickly and easily. And you don't have to pick a standard bar length you can pick something weird so if you want to hear what it would sound like with that first bar but only the first five eighths of it let's do use quantize which hopefully will be set to a same value and then we can put it on five eighths and now that's going to do something completely different so here's where you can get pretty experimental So there is flipping from on the beat to off the beat in a potentially interesting way. So this is something which you can do pretty quickly with this feature. You can change those lengths to any odd number and, and get something interesting a lot of the time. Certainly something I used to make quite a lot of use of back in the day on the Atari. So this is also available in the MIDI editor. So this will work on MIDI and instrument tracks. And it's certainly something which I think is a bit sad. It's just been pushed to the sidelines and is not enabled by default. but. I guess that's progress. 
Anyway, as ever, I hope you found that useful. And if you have, please like and comment and maybe even subscribe. And we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.